Okay, thank you so much. And uh, uh, thank you, the organizers, for having me here. It's a pleasure to be back. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do something uh, slightly different in a sense that I'm going to give a chalkboard talk, which, uh, which is not so easy, especially since the original talk was a computer talk. But after hearing all the previous talks, I figured I'll change things uh, quite a bit. So, so what am I going to talk about? Um, uh, essentially, I want to talk about uh, combinatorial sequences. Combinatorial sequences, and uh, and the main questions that I want to ask is, uh, is what is the formula? Can we uh, can we actually say something? This combinatorial sequence has a formula, and uh, if you look at online encyclopedia of integer sequences, there are over quarter million sequences every day. More more and more sequences added. So sounds like we should look into that, and. Uh, uh, and you already know uh, one type of answer that I'm going to give in terms of the generating function, but it's sort of worth uh, going back a little bit. So this is going to be part zero of my talk. What is the formula? And, uh, and the first thing to understand uh, uh, is that there is no one notion of a formula. It just makes no sense. Uh, for different purposes, you need different formulas. And I'm going to give an example that was already uh, mentioned a few times. So I'm going to look at Fibonacci numbers. The Fibonacci numbers. And uh, then, um, if you think about it, fn plus 1 equal to fn plus fn minus 1 is a perfectly good formula. It, it completely, uh, you know, with initial conditions, it completely defines it. It makes it very easy to compute, and you can understand the great deal from, uh, immediately from there. So, particularly if you write uh, the generating function f n t to the n, uh, you immediately see that this is one minus t minus t squared, which is a different kind of formula, also very nice. Okay, but uh, uh, this is not the end, of course. Another uh, type of formula that you, that you can get is uh, uh, one over square root of uh, 5 times phi to the n, and that's a different kind of formula. That's an asymptotic formula, and you can't really say that this uh, formula is better than that, or the other way around. Uh, that's because somehow uh, that formula doesn't really tell, uh, even though it looks uh, 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 very nice, and in fact, if, since fn is the nearest integer uh, to, uh, to this, phi is the golden ratio. Uh, you, you, one can think that this actually helps you to calculate uh, Fibonacci numbers, but it doesn't because you need square root of uh, uh, you need to understand the golden ratio with very high precision. So it doesn't. So if you start doing numericals, it doesn't really work. Okay. Okay. Uh, some acrobatics. <laughs> uh, so and and the final formula is that we also heard in the very first day sort of mentioned is uh, this formula uh, 0 1 1 1 I'm going to raise it to the power n and I'm going to take uh, uh, entry 1 2 and that formula actually is the best formula for computing Fibonacci numbers because it's, uh, if, if you need to raise it what was the original 2 to the thousand in the first exercise if you want to raise it to a really large power you keep squaring and that's how you do it so uh, so now that we understand that there is no uh, one uh, uh, good formula, we can sort of proceed to see what do other people tell us, what is a good formula. Uh, before I do that, questions about anything? Insults? Uh, yeah, you didn't prepare, you didn't prepare, okay. Well, before you do, I'm going to move on. Uh, so, uh, so, pa so part one is uh, uh, sort of answers. Um, so the first answer, this is not going to be historic in any sense, the first answer is going to be uh, due to Richard Stanley. So if you open, uh, uh, so, uh, so Stanley, uh, Stanley, enumerative combinatorics one, if you open the introduction, he, I'm going to read it uh, because it's so funny. Uh, so, for, uh, so formula, 
good formula is a completely explicit closed formula involving only well-known functions and free of summation symbols. That's what he thinks it is. <laughs> and uh, so I'm not going to write it, uh, but, in, uh, but instead, you know, I, uh, I can do that to other people as well. So let's see. So once I basically ask him, uh, Richard, in public, Richard, do you think this, this is not a formula, but uh, product uh, k from 1 up to n, k factorial over e to the sine square root of k over pi, uh, uh, what, what did I do? Raised to the k square floor. Do you think that is a formula and this is not? And he said yes. Don't argue. <laughs> <laughs> there is no summation sign anywhere. Yes, there is. No, 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 no. He means that. No, I think sign. that's what no, he no, meant. No. I asked him. I asked him. <laughs> I asked him. Uh, and uh, uh, so if you think, how about this? 2 to the, uh, two to the k, k from 1 uh, up to n. That has a summation sign, and he thinks this is better than that. Well, that's what he says. I, I'm not going to comment on this further. <coughs> this is not uh, uh, perhaps a possibly a good answer. Uh, so that's Stanley answer. The answer that you can see, so this is my first try. Second try is, uh, uh, se se second try is what you see uh, at this conference. So the answer is going to be um, rational, algebraic, uh, uh, p recursive, uh, ADE. Uh, and, and there are a few in the middle that uh, you can know. So that's a formula. Is that a good answer? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> uh, if, if that's a good answer, why so many of you want to prove that something is not something? Pessimists. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm even worse. Uh, so, I, um, mm, mm. So, so here is uh, here is how I sort of think of that. So this is uh, it's sort of uh, uh, so that's that's how I teach. This is algebraic. Oh, this is p recursive. <coughs> this is this is ADE, and uh, there is an even bigger class. And I'm going to write a functional equation, which is what uh, which is what. Uh, People at this conference start with. You start with that and you prove that your uh, generating function is not here, or you start with that and you prove that it's not here, and so forth. Which is perfectly good activity, except uh, uh, that's, not, uh, that's not what I actually try to do. Um, so, so here is my diagram. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Fe in this corner appropriately. and. Uh, this is going to be uh, BAD. Uh, this is going to be AW. Uh, this is going to be AT. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this is going to be TBB. And this is going to be uh, UN. So this is functional equation. This is bad. This is awful. This is absolutely terrible, uh, terrifying beyond belief, unfathomable. <laughs> okay, that's my that, so, and I'm going to be starting to put stuff in here, and I'll explain a little more about it. So, um, maybe I should erase it. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, yes, you will get an opportunity. <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, this is my second try, and uh, so the third try is due to Herb Wilf, who uh, uh, in. Uh, in, in, in 1980, I basically said the following. Let's uh, a formula, formula for f of n is something, is, is an algorithm which, uh, uh, which computes, uh, which computes uh, f of n in little o of f of n time. Okay? Now, that's, uh, that's not a good definition, but it's insightful. It's not a good definition because basically anything is a formula. If you, uh, by this definition, if you want, for example, to compute, uh, uh, I don't know, the number, number of uh, uh, spanning forests, 
Uh, the, it's, it basically says that this is spanning forms in graph gamma, then this is n times number of uh, spanning trees uh, in gamma. And uh, because computing n is so fast, this, is, this becomes a formula, not a very good formula. Uh, so what he really meant is uh, we need to think of a formula as an algorithm, not some kind of product of some stuff. Yes, Krish. So did he really define it that way, or yeah. was this just a criterion to um, so be, be a formula? To be it's completely a sufficient, sufficient condition. No, no, no. That's a, he, he, he had two definitions, and that was one of them. The second definition, he also had the second definition, it's something that can be computed in poly and time, which for which this wouldn't satisfy. But, uh, and, uh, and this is the one I actually like better. Uh, it's, it's in many cases that's uh, interrelated in different ways. Okay? So, so actually, uh, I actually want to think of formula uh, as an algorithm indeed. Uh, uh, and, uh, I want to talk about some sequences that lie in this second diagram that I conveniently erased uh, and uh, tell you a little bit of what to do. So before I do that, let me also state the conjecture. The conjecture, so what are this, uh, 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 so let's call this part two. What are these bad plus sequences? Uh, so, Wilf provides us a very convenient conjecture. He basically says, I know one. So, he, here is his conjecture. Uh, Wilf. A n number of unlabeled, unlabeled graphs on n vertices uh, is basically bad. Yeah, bad in, uh, uh, bad in the sense that uh, oh, cannot, uh, <coughs> cannot be computed in, in Polyan time. Can be computed in Polyan time. That's what he says. And of course, stating such conjectures is really easy. Uh, proving this con such conjectures is impossible for, uh, for, uh, for multiple reasons. One reason being that our complexity theory lower bounds are really pathetic. You're not going to uh, be able to prove anything like that anytime in the future. However, I have a deeper reason why it's really going to be hard to prove, because I actually think it might be wrong, this particular one. I don't believe that. Um, and so let me, uh, let me tell you a little bit why I don't believe that. I don't have uh, too many results in this direction, but I have a few and uh, they're not published, uh, and, but we'll see. Hopefully, they'll be published within a year, or, so, oh, you know, they will appear on, on the nearest archive within a year or so. So, um, so one example of a theorem is the following result. I'm going to put a theorem claim because it hasn't actually uh, been, uh, been written. Uh, so, suppose uh, T of n is the number of um, unlabeled, uh, un unlabeled triangulations with n vertices and similarly p of n number of unlabeled um, three connected planar, planar graphs with n vertices. Then T of n and P of n can in fact be computed in poly n time. That's what I'm saying. Now the crucial word here is unlabeled. If, if you were doing label stuff, there are just there are tough formulas. You could have done everything. And uh, how do you do that? If you look at OIS, people struggle. They have gigantic programs. They compute. I think they compute this one, uh, triangulations up to end something like 30. And you get large numbers, and the problem, programs just die. <coughs> However, 
I think they're just not seeing the big picture. If you don't actually try to compute this, but try to prove that it's possible, then you can do it. Uh, and uh, uh, you have to start with that formula and uh, use uh, a version of Poirier theory in some, uh, uh, in some way, which turned out to be possible. Let me not talk much about that unless there are questions about this. Any more? Yeah, you're all happy? Oh, you're all asleep, yeah? <laughs> no? Okay, so, so one thing that's, uh, that's worth paying attention, uh, so suppose you completely don't care about any of that stuff, uh, the point is once, uh, uh, what, what we do is essentially find recurrence, uh, you know, long recurrence relations for this formula. <coughs> but once you found them, uh, you can actually prove that uh, uh, this implies that T of n and T of n not AD. Uh, I don't want to uh, even make a claim of that, but that's going to be true. So, so these sequences are not going to satisfy algebraic differential equation. Because the, because the formulas are a variation on mother type formulas. Yeah, what? What? Oh, uh, mother? Oh, you know, my German is not up to your standards, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so, so you get, uh, it's, you, you don't get exactly uh, um, uh, mother equations, but you get something, uh, some infinite version of that, which I think can be done. Um, I, I, I want to move on. Can you can, can move on? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Excellent. So the next thing I'm... So, uh, so if you are on a quest of finding uh, bad, terrible, etc. sequences, you don't really want to deal with counting unlabeled objects. I don't think that's actually going to work uh, uh, in the future. Things are really not as bad as they appear uh, at first glance, at least. Uh, uh, there was no way for Will to see that, but uh, it's really not so bad. So what is the bad sequence? Uh, so what is the real conjecture that one can ask? And the real conjecture that one can ask is, let AN be a number of self-avoiding self walks of lengths N just in the grid. I don't think you can compute it. There is just no chance for, of you doing it. And uh, so, uh, so you, you understand, of course, why uh, one sh uh, wh why there is such a big difference between self-avoiding and just general walks. General walks, you can use dynamic programming. You can compute everything in polynomial time. That's why you could have had this functional equation. Here, uh, uh, here, when you have these complicated walks, you have to keep a real large boundary in the memory, and that's a problem. That's why dynamic programming is not going to work. And uh, I don't see any way around it. And uh, I don't see, uh, barring some truly amazing advances, I don't see how one could actually uh, uh, could, uh, could actually prove that this uh, AN can, uh, can, can, cannot be computed computed in in, in poly and time. Now this is what I would call one of those uh, awful formulas. So th this is this is a this is not as hard as it gets, but this is clearly this is clearly terrible. Okay. So awful or terrible? It's not absolutely terrible. It's just terrible. <laughs> uh, uh, and there are, there are worse stuff. Um, but we don't have any ideas how to how to so prove that. Yeah. No, neither did Will. Neither neither does anyone else. I mean, this is. Uh, it's even hard to explain why this is hard. So somehow this is uh, that's that's a, that's a difficulty in here. Your input is just an integer n. You see, how, how do you see from an integer n anything about the number of self-avoiding walks? You basically cannot do any computations with them. What you're going to do with them? Uh, so somehow you can do in polynomial time only very very little. We don't even know, uh, we, we don't know a lot about computations. Uh, we don't know factoring and other things. It's, it's a slightly different complexity type. We, we really know very little uh, about lower bounds. I don't think there is any hope for us to prove something for such an explicit sequence. 
Okay? And um, so, uh, so since we cannot do that, I'm going to move on. Um, basically, because I want to say that um, in reality, we want to think of a much bigger class of sequences than this one. If, 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 there is, if we want to prove something about complexity of sequences, we, we cannot be stuck on one sequence. We want to get something bigger. And, uh, and that's what I'm going to do. So let's call this part three or something. And I'm going to look at, uh, I'm going to look at Kelly graphs. And uh, for Kelly graph, so, so we're gonna, I'm going to look at gamma, which is a Kelly graph of group G with a generating set. Do I need to define that? So elements are elements of the group, and they differ. Uh, so, so, so the edges are G times S. So these are the edges uh, where S is in S and G is in G. Okay? So these are, uh, so that's a, so if your group is infinite, that's an infinite graph. And one can ask about uh, walks in this graph, uh, self-avoiding walks, and what I'm going to look at, uh, number of loops in this graph. So that's what I'm going to write. That's uh, the sequence is called the uh, uh, word growth, uh, and uh, uh, it's been studied extensively. There is just a tremendous amount of literature. If you, uh, if you are computationally inclined, you don't want to talk about sort of generic groups. You want to see finite generating groups. You want to say that your basically group is a subgroup of some GLKZ, in which case you know how to multiply matrices. You, you can start with a finite set of matrices, and you can start multiplying them, and... Uh, um, mm. yeah, but are you really interested in the walks, or in the elements that you can reach? Yeah, yeah, so you're right, you're right. Uh, this is... Uh, because the walks that sound trivial. You're, you're right. Um, yeah. So you mean a growth series? <laughs> That's, I, I mean a growth series, yeah. So, so sort of the, the point I want to say is, yeah, so it's not words, is. Uh, uh, I'm going to keep W words, and I think that would make it uh, correct. Um, but uh, uh, so the laws still they used they used words, so and that's true. still not the right thing. You mean the number of elements of distance n? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so somehow the point is that I don't want to study that. <laughs> and uh, I, I want uh, to, uh, that's because, the, uh, more or less for the same reason, this is, uh, the equivalence relation is complicated. Uh, so if you look at two elements that you obtain at distance n, it's, uh, uh, it can be hard to say, uh, 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 written as words, it can be hard to say whether they're identical elements or not. And, uh, <coughs> and I want to start with that. So what I want to study is number of uh, uh, number of closed loops of lengths n, and this this is a this is a more combinatorial object. So uh, let me put let me make a graph like this. So uh, so this is uh, uh, this is a really graph theoretic notion, and uh, so number of uh, number of closed loops of lengths n in gamma. And that's, and, and that's, in some sense, much more interesting than the word growth. This is what they call co-growth, and uh, there is nothing particularly coy about it, but uh, that's, uh, that's what people do. Okay? And, uh, and now, um, now, that, now we have results. Now we can talk about 
uh, uh, all kinds of groups and uh, all kinds of results. So, for example, if your group is a billion, then this actually is defined. So, G, G is a billion, then uh, the sequence AN, which is defined as number of uh, closed loops of length N, uh, that's, uh, I'm going to write, pericursive. Okay? So, uh, since uh, you all know how that goes, I'm not going to talk about that. And uh, instead, I'm going to talk about other groups. So here is... Does this extend to more polynomial groups? Uh, this P or Chris or Chris? Uh, no. I, uh, if, if it, so I actually uh, wondered about that for a while, and, uh, 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 and no. There is no, this is not known. Oh, for, for, uh, I don't want to venture in this. Uh, I'll, t I'll tell you something that from which you're going to see that in, in the generator of soluble groups, that's not true. Um, for an important might be. Um, so why don't we make it a definition of some kind. Uh, uh, my definition disappeared from here. Where is my definition? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'm just gonna, yeah, definition is secure. Yeah, okay. So who knows uh, what's gonna happen now. Um, so I'm gonna, um, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna define, uh, first, first, I'm just gonna define one kind of group, uh, bounce like solitary groups, uh, which are gonna be corresponding to K and and uh, a to the k, so they're basically a b subject to relation a to the k b a to the minus k equal to b to the n. So these are two generators, and uh, uh, basically it's a one related <coughs> group. Uh, k and n can be any, but now, but now we have some interesting results that. Uh, so here is uh, here is a theorem. It's kind of like a combined uh, res uh, s the result of several things. Uh, where uh, everything disappeared. <laughs> this is uh, this is oh yeah here we go. <laughs> uh, so this is very unfortunate. So maybe before I tell you, it's actually useful uh, to think of bounds like solitary group uh, as a, a, as a subgroup uh, of. Uh, of uh, GL to Q uh, uh, defined by the matrices 0, 1, 1, 1, that's uh, uh, no, 1, 1, 0, 1, and uh, n over k, 1, 0, 0. So it's a group spanned by these two matrices. Okay? It's, uh, uh, oh, uh, GL in GL to Q. And now, uh, and now here is what's true. It turns out that uh, this is a theorem uh, of uh, four authors uh, that uh, I don't have written here anywhere. Uh, but Andrew can tell me who the four are. You want to tell me who the four authors are of your paper, from your paper? Oh, uh, Van Rensburg, Murray Elder, my former PhD student Thomas Long, and um, me. Yes. So, so what Andrew said uh, is that uh, if you have a uh, bounce <coughs> solitary group, sort of diag uh, so the diagonal one, k k, uh, mm, then a n is uh, uh, pretty carsy. Okay. And some thanks should go to Manuel Cowers, whose code helped us produce some explicit ideas. Okay, give me my talk to give. Okay, yeah. I'll give my talk. You think later. Okay. And so this is part one. Part two, uh, and that follows from, uh, uh, th that actually is written in my uh, paper uh, with Scott Garabrand, my student. So if we have the uh, Bamsnack solitaire group 1K, then, then this is, uh, the, uh, then AM is uh, not, not, not pericars. So, uh, so somehow, even in this particular case, two results are 
very, uh, very different, uh, also the group behave differently. Uh, these are solvable groups, uh, uh, these are non-amenable groups actually. And uh, uh, the groups behave differently and the corresponding co-growth sequence behaves very, very differently. Did you, which, which one is non-amenable? Uh, this, uh, this is non-amenable, this is solvable. Yeah. And uh, what happens in uh, what happens for general? I expect uh, uh, I expect that the, uh, this is this is all going to be terrible, but the, in general case, but I cannot prove that. So it's just harder to prove that something is not recursive. Uh, but I don't know uh, to be uh, to be precise. So that's actually so that might seem like bad, but it's not that bad. So let me tell you what's, uh, what's really going on and uh, explain where this whole thing comes from. How am I doing this time? Not so good. So, um, so maybe, um, maybe one, word about, one word about this result. This result follows from asymptotics. In, in case of uh, from, pro, pro, from probabilistic argument, in case, uh, uh, in case of solvable groups, uh, uh, which are... Uh, 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 so, in case of solvable groups, it's actually known on the asymptotics. If they have exponential growth, it, the probability of return is, it, uh, grows like e to the minus cubic root of m, which is forbidden by the asymptotic uh, arguments. It does not follow that these are not AD. I don't know if this is AD or not. I don't expect that to be so, but I won't be able to prove that at all. So, here is, so let me tell you. Let me tell you what I can do in that direction, uh, which actually is uh, qu uh, quite a bit powerful. So this is all joint work with my uh, former student, <coughs> Scott Garbrandt, and um, we'll have a theorem uh, which says the following. So, so I'm gonna. Uh, so here is a theorem by Scott Garbrandt and myself. It's uh, let. Um, I'm, I'm gonna write stuff and then I'm gonna explain it. Uh, so for every a n uh, is a number of uh, balance paths of uh, uh, a finite state automata with two stacks. There exists. Uh, a G, which is a finitely generating uh, subgroup of SL, SL 4 Z, and uh, and the generating and the finite generating set such uh, such that the sequence the sequence what did I, what I call number of uh, uh, number of closed loops of flex N. In, uh, uh, in, uh, in in Kelly graph of GS is equal to a n mod two. So what I can do is basically uh, uh, so find uh, uh, find a state automaton with two stacks. If you don't know what it is, it's essentially the same as Turing machine. As a way to think about it. Uh, is uh, you have you have some graph and you have some uh, uh, some uh, some uh, some source and something uh, and you're looking at all kinds of paths which go from s to t uh, of length n. That's almost a n except there are weights there are weights on the edges. The weights are uh, so I want to think of weights <coughs> uh, weights. Are in the product of uh, two free groups, Fk and Fl. The two corresponds to two stacks. That's how I want to think of uh, a finite state automaton with uh, uh, two stacks. And so now I'm looking at uh, at paths from S to T. I'm taking a product of all the weights to be balanced. Uh, to be balanced, I want the product to be identity. Uh, let me not write any of that. Uh, you've, you've you've seen this type of things before, I'm sure. So, so now, now what I'm saying is uh, this, uh, this, uh, I can emulate this, uh, this type of sequences with closed loops. Okay? So there is a, this four corresponds to, uh, uh, corresponds to having two free groups. Essentially, SL4Z contains the product of two free groups. That's the only reason for four. 
And um, now, what does it, what does this tell us? Well, this is saying that. So here is a corollary um, that um, corollary one um, there exists uh, G and S as above such that A N, which is the number of closed loops of length n, is uh, not uh, not Peary Carsey. Which is something that we already seen for this specific group. That, uh, it's not, it might not seem that impressive. However, look at my parallel 2, it's the same thing, not, uh, not AD. So, because I have so much flexibility, I can do that. Now, why can I do that? I can do that because essentially, uh, since, uh, since the N come, come, uh, can come from a Turing machine, I can, I, can, I can do any kind of sequence I want for A N. <laughs> So, uh, so, um, so let me let me not tell you how theory implies Carly one, but let me tell you how theory implies Carly two instead, which may may be more interesting. So I'm gonna make a n. Well, that's uh, this is uh, notation is a little different. This is number of closed loops. So I'm gonna make a n to be equal to one if n equal to k factorial plus k and zero otherwise. That's what I'm going to do. And uh, obviously, this sequence can be computed. If it can be computed, there is a finite state automaton with uh, two stacks. We actually constructed explicitly with about 30 nodes or so. It's not so bad. Now, uh, uh, so how does theorem plus Carly 2? Well, what you need to show is, uh, is a lemma. Um, so here is a lemma. Uh, for every, uh, I'm going to write B n. Uh, so for every, if for every B n, uh, which is equal to A n mod two, this A n. Uh, B uh, B n is not A d. So I'm saying that if we ha if we have any integer sequences, <coughs> any integer sequence which is odd at these very specific values, then it cannot be AD. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, the, uh, so in particular if it, it cannot be zero one sequences, it cannot be summation of k t to the k factorial plus k, but that was known way before, uh, and you've, you've seen this type of uh, bounds before, and this this is this is somewhat stronger. Okay, so, uh, and uh, uh, so we have more general criterion for the, for doing this kind of thing, but uh, uh, I, I want to I, I want to move on to to the, uh, to, uh, to explain a little more of that. But I'm happy to explain this part as well. Yeah, I'm just a hint as how how one takes advantage of these big gaps. Okay, let me um, let let me state the real lemma rather than. So, that, so what I wrote there is kind of a baby version of a lemma. Let me let me state the real lemma, which I uh, which I do believe I have written. So, so real lemma, real lemma says uh, so. Suppose we have uh, so suppose we have B n. This is the uh, integer sequence, and uh, I'm gonna. Uh, maybe make beta n to be b n mod two, and k uh, is a case case one in beta n. You you, you with me? <coughs> so this is case one, and uh, so suppose n k over n k plus one goes to zero as k goes to infinity. Uh, so there are two conditions. The first condition, and the second condition. The second condition is for every um, for every p and q, there exists a k such that 
and k equal to p mod two to the q. This are for any in, for any two integers, uh, as there exists one uh, odd number which is uh, uh, which which is uh, which is uh, in, in which, which is a specific, specific thing in an arithmetic progression. So I'm saying every arithmetic progression modular power of two contains all possible places of odd. So they're sparse, which is a, uh, uh, which is a somewhat stronger condition than uh, usual with these gaps. So so yeah. So conclusion. Then the end not not a D. Okay. So, so the example of k factorial plus k is just a convenient special, a convenient case when everything works. Even notation-wise, I, I made it so that it's really easy to see this kind of thing. Yes. So the, the, the question was, how do you exploit the gaps to prove that there's no how do you prove this real lemma? Ah, uh, that's a different question. Uh, I mean, I can tell you how, how the proof goes. The proof is elementary. You basically write down uh, ADE as a recurrence relation for BN. There are lots of binomial coefficients you have to take into account because we're doing things, mod two things simplify a little bit. And then, uh, and then the rest is just, it's, this lemma uses nothing. No analysis, no nothing whatsoever. It's, uh, it's, it's just a combinatorial lemma, it takes two pages of calculation. Not enlightening by any means. And uh, uh, so somehow, and it's not like even interesting lemma. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that Cutler numbers show that you, uh, um, this is sort of non-example, non-example. So if, uh, if you take Cutler numbers, Cutler numbers a n are equal. Cutler numbers of n is equal to mod two is equal to one if n is two to the k minus one and zero otherwise. That's a nice exercise going back to Kummer. Um, and uh, once you so this shows that you cannot um, kind of improve this uh, much. Uh, so. Uh, so, so somehow there are al even algebraic sequences <coughs> which mod two don't uh, don't have uh, do have large gaps. That's what I want to say. Uh, you know, modular two to the q. This is completely not going to work for that. Uh, but I'm saying that you shouldn't expect stronger st stronger l uh, limiting behavior here. Okay, let me move on. So, uh, so what exactly? So what exactly am I saying in this theorem? This theorem is much stronger than its implication. The theorem is saying that I can emulate using uh, uh, using uh, this uh, 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 closed loops on graphs. I can emulate anything I want, really anything. Uh, however, it's it's maybe worth mentioning that um, uh, we actually recently now this, um, since I'm bragging, I can do tell you a little more. So, so one can, so, so let, uh, let B, Bn be the number of closed loops of, of length n. I'm going to define the row to be limit Bn to the power 1 over n as n goes to infinity. This is called spectral radius. And uh, for soluble groups, uh, uh, it's, I mean, uh, yeah, for, for amenable groups, it's all, uh, so it's 1. So if, uh, if rho is 1, then, uh, then G is uh, amenable, uh, so there's nothing to understand. But the interesting question is, what can we say about, uh, what can we say about rho for non-amenable groups? So if, if the sequence, if the sequence Bn is p recursive, you better believe that Bn is, uh, that rho is going to be algebraic. And, uh, and that's a theorem, this, is, this has yet to, uh, uh, appear on the archive. This is my joint work with Kassabov. There exists a, a G such that rho is actually not algebraic. We, uh, so the proof of this theorem is terrible. 
this is not your, uh, the groups are not your friend. Uh, we construct a continuum sized family of groups uh, when we prove that they all have different spectral radius, which implies that there exists one that's non algebraic. This is not your friend. So if you, if you have any, and that doesn't prove that it's not ATE or anything like that. It just proves that it's really terrible. With there are terrible uh, groups with a really terrible uh, spectral radius. And uh, we spe this is part of the reason this paper hasn't appeared. We tried to make it more explicit. We tried to uh, play with logic and all kinds of other stuff. We can't. This is, uh, uh, that's, uh, the existential result is the only one we have. Okay, so let me, let me now proceed to the last part. Uh, how else can I get bad sequences? And, the, and, my sec and my last version is pattern avoidance. seen the definition before, uh, so, um, so suppose we have a finite, uh, finite subset of, uh, of a symmetric group SK, and uh, I'm going to look at the uh, number, number of uh, a, uh, AV and of F, so number of sigma in SN, avoiding, uh, avoiding all F Okay, so uh, so just to just to understand what avoiding means, uh, uh, it's sort of easier to think in terms of containment. You think of sigma as a zero-one matrix. If you can have a sub-matrix, uh, which is a which is a matrix of another permutation, which says that it contains it, otherwise it avoids it. And uh, and now uh, let's call this A n. And now we can ask, what can we say about A n? And this was a conjecture um, for many years. This was a conjecture by Noonan and Zalberg, <coughs> also uh, asked us a question earlier by Ira Gesser, that uh, such a n are all uh, pericursor, and they're not. OK, so theorem. Uh, this is theorem by Scott Garabrant and myself. There exist. There exists F. Uh, so I'm going to write it S80 because it's actually small enough. So there exists there exist a finite set of permutations of, of, of size 80. Uh, the way to think about it is that this set has about 10 to the 70 or something elements, such that, such that AN is not, not pericursive. And uh, if you're not impressed with that much, uh, uh, we have kind of a second theorem, theorem one, theorem two, where everything is exactly the same, same as 80. Uh, uh, this is not AD. Uh, this, uh, this hasn't been published, but I can send you the right. This is not too high from the technology we have. Is the, are the theorems clear? I did this very, very fast. But Miklos mentioned already pattern avoidance. Yeah? These results, it's not yet excluded that there is the for senior factors. Correct. Conjecture. Correct. In fact, I wouldn't, you know, I believe Tony. <laughs> he says that already 1, 3, 2, 4 is not precursive, and I believe, uh, uh, I think there is a strong evidence in favor of that. Uh, uh, it, there is more to, I have more to say. <laughs> is this, are the statements clear? So basically, these are uh, absolutely terrifying sequences. You, uh, you can do anything you want, and uh, I'm not even going to tell you the main lemma. I'm just going to say it. Um, and uh, I'm going to say it in the following form. So for every uh, final step automata with two steps, uh, uh, if, if you have a n number of uh, balanced, uh, balanced paths of length n, there exists f and f prime in some sk such that 
Yeah, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna state the main lemma uh, such that um, um, avoiding of f of length n minus avoiding of f prime of length n. Uh, I'm gonna write it and then I'm gonna correct it. Is uh, a n mod two. That sounds that doesn't sound beautiful, but it's actually a little bit worse. Since so n should be replaced with uh, c n plus d for some for some fixed c and d. Uh, sorry, what is a n? What is what? A n. A n number of balance pairs. So I'm saying that I can emulate finite state automata, not with one uh, what not with one pattern, but with uh, uh, with, uh, by taking difference of two patterns, mod two. And uh, not for all integer values, but for uh, arithmetic progression. So this C and D, uh, 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 so some, some, uh, some, uh, some fixed C and D. Uh, now, this, this of course uh, easily implies uh, uh, theorem one. That's because um, you, can, you can do the same trick as before. Uh, it cannot be that both of those are pericarsive. If, if, uh, if they were pericarsive, then a subsequence corresponding to arithmetic progression would be pericarsive, then the difference would be pericarsive, and one can make up a sequence mod 2 which is not pericarsive, you don't. And, uh, and now you can lose uh, this real number here for the sequence uh, uh, k factorial plus k, which I erased, uh, to, to, to do theorem 2. Because you can also have a finite state automata and you go through the same motion. Okay? So, so, so if you think this is bad, I have even worse news for you. So, so, so where does the 80 come from? 80? Mm -hmm. Huh. <laughs> that uh, 10 pages of calculation. So essentially, I need to um, notice that this is k and this is 80. So essentially, uh, uh, for the automata which, uh, which, which writes k factorial plus k, we, we show that the 80 is sufficient space to em em emulate things there. But it's not, uh, it's not enlightening. This, uh, 80, 80 by 80 are big matrices that you don't really, it's hard to explain what's going on there. Uh, but the, the 80 comes from basically playing with some specific automata. Just because I like to make things precise. And um, so, so the thing is, the main lemma, uh, if you, uh, the more you think about it, it implies, it, it implies <coughs> amazing things that people kind of know, but not, uh, not really, uh, don't, don't really feel it. So let me, let me do, uh, let me, let me say it's a corollary. Uh, so the corollary, and uh, I'm going to finish soon. So the corollary says that uh, given uh, given f f prime in S k, the question whether uh, a uh, a v of f equal to uh, a v n of f prime mod two for all n is is undecidable. That follows from the standard automata series. There is nothing there. But it's telling you, uh, uh, so I can write a few more corollaries of this kind. So for example, you can have, uh, you, you, you can have uh, um, two, uh, two sets of patterns so, the, uh, so that they, uh, the uh, mod two, they're the same for a really, really long time. And then suddenly they change because you can emulate, uh, you can do automata do weird things like uh, uh, Ackerman function type uh, type sequence. So uh, so so just because uh, you have a powerful computer which tells you that th those two things are the same mode two for the first thousand entries, that tells you nothing. Okay, let me do um, let me do a little bit more. Yeah, I know. Give, 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 me, give me a chance to uh, uh, Carol too. So, 
uh, uh, so I kind of cannot do without this because that ties with the original thing. So, but two cannot cannot be com computed in fully n time, and uh, unless I'm going to write very quickly. Parity x is equal to x. This is kind of like p versus p, but a little different. I can explain exactly what that is. So I'm saying that given some computer science assumption, the parity of the sequence actually cannot be computed. Uh, so to tie it uh, with, uh, uh, with a famous uh, discussion about uh, uh, about computing 1, 3, 2, 4, avoiding the thousand terms of 1, 3, 2, 4, avoiding, uh, Tony maybe thinks that he can compute the first couple of digits. This is saying that it's extremely unlikely you should be, computing the, be able to compute the last one. That's not going to work, probably. So I think uh, in this uh, battle, Inara is going to lose uh, whatever euros he promised to pay. Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> let me stop here, but do please do ask questions. Questions? So I found it fascinating. Um, I have a question. I might understand all your groups are sort of linear groups in your bad examples? Or? Which examples? This one? Yeah. No, 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 no. So the examples that we constructed for uh, no, uh, no, no, uh, uh, non ADE. Yes, they were. But in this one, yeah. this is uh, it's kind of like risk products uh, uh, of of uh, lots of Grigorchuk, lots of sl 2 ps in there, and it's it's no. Then they can, there is no chance this can be uh, a linear group. And that was sort of my next question about the Grigorchuk group or group of intermediate. If it's the case that CLN is never. No, no, Gri uh, Grigorchuk group is amenable, so you don't actually want to use Grigorchuk no, group in this construction. I'm wondering if the CLN sequence is, is never P recursive in the case of an intergroup of intermediate growth. That's uh, the, uh, intermediate growth is never P recursive, that's possible. Uh, it, since we know relatively little about groups of intermediate growth, in this particular case, we don't even know this uh, CLN uh, for Grigorchuk group. So. Or, uh, I asked. Uh, I asked Andrew. I don't think we know it for Heisenberg group. You don't know it for the Heisenberg group. Yeah. So it's, that's why I didn't want to answer your important question because I don't think people. You know, they they, they have a lot of results on this, and I couldn't <coughs> find. I I wanted to find kind of like a, a sort of starter problem for my student, and yeah. I couldn't find the for calculation for the Heisenberg group. So it should just be like this Q binomial that maybe you evaluate as. Uh, it's more complicated because of the multiplicate. Yeah, it's it's more complicated. Uh, but uh, let me let me do one more color since there is a um, so car the, the last color that I wanted to do is saying that uh, um, mm, color color three uh, so there exists f f prime in uh, <coughs> S K such that. Uh, um, it's the same question, a, a b of f equal to a b n of f prime mod 2 for all n is independent of, uh, of zfc. This is also totally standard corollary because the automata are super powerful. But now if you think of that, that's uh, what I call unfathomable. This is saying that there are truly horrible uh, sets of patterns, and so this sequence is not your friend. Even mod 2, you cannot say anything about this thing at all. Okay. Okay, so for further questions, maybe you can ask me your Thank break, you. so let's thanks. <laughs>
Yeah, so you don't small. you don't know a pair. It's just a pair. Uh, it's not a pair. This is a gigantic set. Yeah. yeah. This is a truly gigantic set. Thanks. I mean, you get a pair of sets, right? And you know that one of them. Is yeah. Like, so they're similar. One is a gigantic, and another one has a pool model. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the reason is uh, what we're doing is uh, we're constructing an evolution. So those which, if, if you have one minus another, that means that the difference has to contain has to contain one of the two.